Galatians chapter 2, verse 2. Galatians chapter 2, and in verse 2, he said, And I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. The subject this afternoon is supernatural shift by the world supernatural shift by the word we have as an objective and, and you know that the month of june is our month of the word for supernatural shift so we are here dealing with supernatural shift by the word he said and i went up by revelation the word of god is a major sponsor of lifts and shifts in life. Light lifts and light shifts. He said, arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Right, light lifts, light shifts. That was Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. We have examples in scripture of people whose lives were lifted. Lives that were shifted by the word. Number one example, Peter. Peter, as soon as Peter got the revelation of who Jesus was, his life shifted. Number one, Simon. Simon, just write Simon. Because it was Simon at that time. Who do men say that I am? Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13. Then verse 17, Peter said, Blessed that, uh, verse 16, Peter, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed that thou Simon. That was why I said that you write Simon. Bad Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, you shifted from Simon to Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was Simon, a sea grass, became Peter, a rocky stone, at the instance of light. His life shifted by light. Example number two. Peter. After he had become Peter. One day he toiled all night. Caught nothing. In Luke chapter 5. You know the story. And in verse 4. Jesus spoke to him. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at the word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. He's still calling him, he's still called Simon in this place. At the catch of the fishes. It was frustration that gave way for celebration at the instance of revelation. Simon Peter had been in frustration because nothing was working. And that frustration gave way to revelation, I mean, to, to celebration at the instance of revelation. 
that is a kind of shift that happens by the world. Example number three, Joseph. Joseph was in prison in Psalm 105. The Bible said in verse 17 that they hurt his feet with he sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time that his word came. The word of the Lord stride him. The king sent and loosed him, even the ruler of the people, and let him go free. Joseph's prison tenure expired. When light came, his tenure in captivity terminated, was terminated by the arrival of light. When the word came, when revelation came, his promotion was irresistible. He was irresistibly promoted to the next level, to where he belonged. Because the word of God is the guarantee of shifts and lifts in life. Question, how does the word shift people? How does the word lift? Number one, through the change, how does the word lift people? Through what means, number one, the change of mindset through the change of mindset when the word of god comes when light comes a major target of the light is the change of mindset romans chapter 12 verse 1 he said i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. Renewing of your mind. A major assignment of the word of God is the renewal of the mind. Not just the carrying of Bible or the quoting of scriptures, but a change of mind. And every change of mind will equal a change of life. Every time mind changes, life changes. Every time mind is upgraded, life is upgraded. Because there is a direct connection between mentality and reality. Your mentality affects your reality. When the prodigal son's mind changed, his life changed. In Luke chapter 15 from verse 17. How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to eat and I am here languishing? I will arise. That changed everything. The challenge in our generation is that we have people who carry the Bible, but the Bible is not changing anything in their minds. There are people who can quote many scriptures, but it didn't change any mindset. Through the change of mindset, the word shifts people's lives. During the course of this lockdown, I have had several lights from scripture that renovated my mind in many ways through the change of mindset number two through the injection of faith when the word comes it comes to inject faith the injection of faith Romans chapter 10 and in verse 17 the Bible said so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Every fresh light injects fresh faith, injects fresh faith into the life of a man. Fresh light injects fresh 
faith. I'd like you to hear this. The arrival of faith, F-A-I-T-H, the arrival of faith is the adjustment of faith, F-A-T-E. When faith arrives, faith is adjusted. When faith, they say faith comes, so faith can arrive. When faith arrives, your faith, what the devil planned for, how the devil planned for you to end can be adjusted. When faith arrives, faith is adjusted. Your revelation can affect your position. Because according to Mark, Matthew chapter 9 verse 29, Jesus was speaking to somebody. He said, according to your faith, let it be to the blind man. Then touch he their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So, how does the word of God shift or changes or lift life? By the change of mindset and then through the injection of faith. Number three, through the change of action. Action changes when revelation arrives. If it is real revelation, it, ch it, puts, it changes action. Peter had already washed his net and was ready to go back home in concluded defeat. But when the word came, launch out your net into the deep for a drought, his action changed. He had washed his net before. But that word brought fresh action. That is, you had concluded it's not working again until you got a light. You had concluded that the diagnosis they gave you is right until you got a word. You had concluded that this is, I, I won't go in this way again until you got a word. Through the change of action. You remember the woman with the issue of blood. Every time revelation arrives, action follows. In Mark chapter 5 verse 24 to verse 28, we saw the story of that woman with the issue of blood. Many people trunk Jesus and then came a woman with the issue of blood. And when she had heard of Jesus, she had suffered many things of many physicians, had spent all that she had. She was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall behold. If I may but touch. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up. Action. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him. I'll talk about that next. But action. Revelation, like the word of God, brings action. Hear me now. A change in action will produce a change in outcome. A change in action will produce a change in life's outcome. There are people who are going to hell because they refuse to change their action. It will produce a shift in outcome. That was number three. Through the change of action. And number four, through the release of power. The release of power. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Through the release of power. Where the word of the king is, there is power. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4. There is power. Luke chapter 4 and in verse 23, the Bible said his word was with power. Verse 32, Luke 4, 32. 
and they were astonished at his, at his doctrine for his word was with power the word of god is the custodian of the power of god people store their money in banks god stores his money his his, his power in word the word of god is the depot of his power the Bible, no wonder the Bible says he opposes all things by the word of his power. Every time you get real light, power flows. Power flows. Power flows. That was the power that flowed for the woman. She heard of Jesus. She proceeded in action. And in verse 30 of Mark 5, where we read, Jesus perceived in himself, knowing himself, that virtue, that word virtue, is the name of your church, is the Greek word dunamis. Jesus knowing in himself that dunamis just left him. <laughs> if you have a Bible that uh, checks the, the translation, it will show you the Greek word dunamis. The same word you shall receive power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. After the Holy Ghost is, is come upon you, that word that is translated power in Acts chapter 1, verse 8 is translated virtue in Mark chapter 5, verse 30. It's the same word miracle working power, power that has no depreciation in quality or quantity. That was what left him. At the instance of the world. Beloved, understand. That every time the world comes, power comes. And when power comes, something changes position. Something must change. I mean, power, power is the sponsor of motion. Is the sponsor of action. Is the sponsor of function. How? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power! And he went. And he went about doing good, healing all that you oppress of the devil. For God was with him. I am here to announce, even as this word is coming upon you, you are here live, or you are watching via the satellite or the internet around the world. Power is coming upon you. Power is coming upon you. And that power is changing something in your life. That power is causing motion in your life. It's causing action in your life. It's causing what was not working to work in your life. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. And somebody shout the loudest power. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. So, how does the word of God shift you? How does it lift you? Through the change of mindset, through the injection of faith, through the change of action, and through the release of power. Conclusion, what do you do to see shiftings and liftings or shifts and lifts by the word? What do you do? You are going to do exactly the things I have said and I will enumerate them again. For the sake of retention. Number one. Trust God. For the right word. The word in season. And the sent word. For your life. Again. Trust God. For the right word. The word in season. And the sent word. For your life. I'm mentioning three things now. The right word. Job chapter 6 verse 25. How forcible are right words. That word that is the correct word for, the situ for, for what you are trusting God for. That word, that word, that word that is the correct word. And then the word in season, Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. He said, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season 
to him that is weary. The word in season is the word that has come to as if it knew what you are going through. The word that, 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 that has come to the stage of life where you are. The word that is necessary for another level of movement. The seasonal word. And then the sent word. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent forth his word. And he healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. It's as if. That was the kind of word that. Met. Joseph in prison. Sent particularly for you. You trust God for, for this word. For your life per time. You open the Bible, not just to, to see what to cram or to quote, but to trust God for that right word, to trust God for the word in season, to trust God for the sword that is particularly sent on the matter. One day I was talking with somebody, and he opened the passage and shared with me a passage of scripture. We're talking. And every line of that passage was as if God had me in mind at that time before that Bible was written. Every line of that passage, every line. The sent, the sent word, the word in season, the right word. That is what to trust God for. That is number one. Trust God for the right word. The word in season, the sent word. Number two, allow the word of God to change your mind. Allow the word of God to change your mind and change your life. Allow it. Whenever you get a real revelation, permit it to change the way you think. Permit it to change the way you think. The way you think, the way you, the way you, the way you function. Let it change it. Because until the mind is changed, life is not changed. We read it already. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Permit the world to change your mind. It is when your mind is progressively changing that your life is progressively changing. You cannot carry a new mind with an old life. When the mind is renewed, life is new. That's how it is. So, now, alright, let me go to point number three because they are linked. Allow the word of God to change your mind and your life. Number, number three, establish action steps. Okay, qualified. Establish fresh Action steps based on the word. Establish fresh action steps based on the word. Establish fresh action steps that are based on the word. That is how the word of God shifts your life and moves you to the next level. While you are studying, it is obvious to you what to do differently. And you are documenting it. You are writing down. Now I got this revelation today. And on the basis of this revelation today. This is what I am to do differently. From now forward. No more gossip. From what I am seeing in this scripture. <laughs> from now forward. I will have no ear. For whatever anybody is trying to tell me. About another person. That is what this Bible is telling me. From now forward, I cannot wake up in the morning without knowing what to do with my life. Because he just told me, teach, me to, to teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Am I communicating at all? 
It's not enough to celebrate that you saw light. It is important to know what to do with the light you saw. What am, what are you, am I to do with it? Very, very important. Allow the word of God to change your mind and change your life. And, 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 so, and then establish fresh action steps. That was what Peter did. Luke chapter 5 verse 4 and 5. I've done everything, no result, but now I will, I will do what you say. I will do what, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. That was what the woman with the issue of blood did. She didn't just see of Jesus, she moved and did something. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. Somebody say the loud most amen. If you have a message note like this, and if it is also your your revelation that is personal study note consistently action most times i have a different pen <laughs> after i've received the light i received action i may write it in green or red going forward this is what to do it gives you peace it gives you speed you see change And then you, 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 it is subject to continu continuous and consistent reviews. At times you forget. Then you met another scripture somewhere that is pointing you to that thing you saw before and pointing you to the same action you talked about before. Then you move forward. Somebody receiving something, say amen. If you are receiving anything, say louder, amen. Establish action steps. And finally, number four, let the word irrigate your prayer life revelation a major assignment of revelation is the fueling of supplications and intercessions if you are seeing light you pray like you drink water <laughs> because every revelation puts puts in you a responsibility for prayer i hear what i'm saying here he said in, in, in John chapter 15 and in verse 7, he said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done to you. So if the word abides in you, it moves you into askings. You shall ask. I saw a scripture yesterday in my personal study, Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 15. He said, See that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. What the Holy Ghost told me, He said, If you don't know how, your, how to manage your time, you can't escape the evil of the days. Most people are in prison today because they couldn't manage their time. One friend said, let's move. He joined bad gang. He didn't know what to do with his life. And because he didn't know what to do with his life, somebody gave him assignment to do with his life. If you don't know how to say, the devil walks with your free time. I even, I mean, somebody is just on his own day and before you know it, I have nothing to do. Let me watch a bad movie. Just plenty of time with nothing to do. Those who are moving about, gossiping and talking about people have nothing to do with their lives. Those who have something meaningful to do with their lives, they talk about nobody. So until you know how to manage your time, you don't escape the evil of the days. He said, redeem the time for the days are evil. Another translation says, buy up opportunities. So if you don't have time management, opportunities pass, you can't see them. Then the next verse was very, very impactful to me. That was verse, I believe, 17. Wherefore, don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. The, the, the Spirit of God tied it together. 
He said, a knowledge of the will of God saves you from the wastage of time. I mean, you, 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 you know what to do with your life. You won't be roaming about the bush. That put me in prayer for almost the next seven to how many hours? Every time I remember, Lord, may I not miss your plan. May I not miss your will. May I not do anything you are not commanding me to do. I don't want to waste my life. May I not waste my life. May I not waste my time. May I not waste my, my, my journey on the earth by doing what you are not asking me to do. Papa Yedeko said, if God did not ask you to build a hospital and you build it, you may be the first patient because of hypertension. Your life is under pressure. Because you are trying to run what God is not running. <laughs> Praise God. Am I communicating at all? I mean, and, and this is in diverse areas. You got the light. The light put you under pressure of prayer. The revelation is meant to irrigate your intercession. Irrigate your supplication. Irrigate your prayer life. That is why they said in the Acts of the Apostles, we shall give ourselves continually to, the, to prayer and the ministry of the world. They go hand in hand. If you are awarded, you will be prayerful. And if you, if you are prayerful, it will push you into scripture to locate bullets for the prayer. Prayer is like the gun. The word is like the bullet. Wordless prayer is like bulletless gun. And Prayerless word is like bulletless weapon. They go together. Let these four things be in place and the word of God will change your life. First, trust God for the right word, the word in season, the sent word for your life. Second, allow the word of God to change your mindset. Let it change the way you are thinking. The way you think about life generally. The way you are thinking about money. The way you are thinking about your relationship with God. Let the world change your life. Thirdly, establish fresh action steps based on the world. On the basis of what I saw in scripture today, this is how I am going to take steps going forward. And finally, let the world irrigate your prayer life. It is a new day. Somebody is shifted and somebody is lifted. You are the one stand on your feet to the shadow of victory. Take your seat because you didn't shout well. Stand on your feet now with the louder shout of victory. <laughs>